afternoon, everybody. Chairpersons, Professor Dr. Seshia, and colleagues. So, now let me go on from the a futuristic talk of Professor Viseshaya, where he talks about prevention. So I don't want people to get confused with prevention and diagnosis and treatment. So what I'm going to talk to you now will be what we are currently following for a diagnosis and treatment of gestational diabetes. The future, as was Dr. Seshaya said, after many studies, maybe the diagnostic cutoffs can come down. You may treat or you may diagnose it at eighth week or tenth week, but presently, please do not confuse yourself with the present guidelines of DIPSI, which I'm going to tell you. And this is for diagnosis and treatment, and don't confuse with primordial prevention of gestational diabetes. So let me go on to the first slide. This is already alluded to that it is gestational diabetes is defined as any degree of glucose intolerance first recognized during pregnancy. So the concern already mentioned, it is a detection of chronic beta cell function, and it's also a stage in the evolution of type two diabetes. And as Ms. Professor Seisha mentioned, it may play a crucial role in increasing the prevalence of diabetes and obesity. So when we talk of ethnicity, we have 11 fold increased risk of developing glucose intolerance during pregnancy compared to Caucasian women. So among ethnic groups, South Indian countries, Indian women have the highest frequency of GDM. So primordial prevention plays a very major role, for especially in a high risk group. So diagnosis is essential in all pregnant women. Universal screening, if you say now universal testing has become mandatory with all the, or the associations throughout the globe, as especially if you see more than 90% of cases of hyperglycemia and pregnancy estimated to occur in the low and middle income countries. So all women should be screened for gestational diabetes, even though they have no symptoms according to the new recommendations. Early screening, we now we come on to early screening, earlier for prevention of diabetes, Professor Seisha mentioned how early you have to go. Now, when we take of diagnosis and treatment, you see the slide here from Japan, which they have picked up 63% in the first trimester and 36 in the second trimester, almost the entire population screen found to have gestational diabetes within the first and second trimester. This shows the importance of GDM in the Asian countries. The implication, again, I'm going back to where Professor Seisha started, the severe microsomia manifests as 11 to 14 weeks of gestation. Severe mi microsomia manifests, yes, as early as 11 to 14 weeks of gestation. So why? Why this happens? You see, already this slide has been mentioned that each islet cell functions as an endocrine organ and it is able to recognize and respond to maternal glycemia. This is exactly what the crux of the point from Cessatia was trying to tell you. So as about the 11th week, it can recognize and respond to maternal glycemia. So when fetus is exposed to increased amniotic fluid glucose before 15th week of gestation, suggesting that metabolic alterations are underway before diagnosis and earlier screening and intervention may be warranted. What happens at that time, already from Cessatia has explained to you, so GDM, let's see in an Indian data, what happens to our country, our people. This GDM manifests in all trimesters. This is a study which we did where we, saw, where we screened more than 4,000 in all pregnant women. When you see here, the red data is of 16th week, we have 16%. And in the 17 to 20 XLO, 22%. And greater than 24 weeks of gestation, we have about 61%. So now the most important thing here I want you to say in this slide is, 38% of women were diagnosed before the recommended weeks of screening. And what happens, the World Health Record Organization is also recognized and say testing in the early trimester is recommended. And again, another study which we published, again, it shows the same data. If you see what are the crux here is one third of all GDM cases were diagnosed during the first trimester itself. 
So it is very, very relevant. We are, able, we are screening them early and screening them as early as possible. Some of the studies that says what the studies abroad have told us, that early glucose tolerance could avoid some diabetic-related complications as hydramnios, preterm deliveries, premature rupture, and fetal anomalies than the later screening groups. So what happens? Why they keep on going for early screening, early screening? Already, Professor Asia has mentioned a few things. This is exactly what happens. Early metabolic imprinting may affect the fetal growth. The human studies have shown the increase in beta cell mass and insulin secretion of early as early as 16 weeks. Now studies have shown even as early as about the 11th week. And that increases throughout the second trimester until 26 weeks of gestation. And this priming in mid-gestation account for the persistent of fetal hyperinsulinia throughout pregnancy and the risk of accelerated fetal growth even when the mother could enjoy good metabolic control later pregnancy. So catch them early, treat them early, prevent the maternal glucose from crossing the placenta and you prevent the maternal insulin from secreting maternal uh, fetal insulin from secretion then you are already there in prevention of diabetes in the future. So early metabolic imprinting may affect the fetal growth. So this is a study now to show whether this is proof in there or not. See, early detection and glucose intolerance and the care given outcomes similar to that of non-diabetic pregnancy, where we had two groups here. You can see here one group has been picked up 0 to 23 weeks of gestation and group two directed beyond 24 weeks of gestation. And when the same care was given in terms of treatment and HbA1c, when we take the outcome or the birth weight of neonates, people who were picked up early, the birth weight was similar to a normal gestational woman of about 3.2, whereas the people who were picked up little late and treated with the same glucose values and same control, the birth weight was much, much higher compared to the one picked earlier. This is exactly what we say when one of our maternal glucose crosses a placenta it causes stimulation of the fetal pancreas, and this goes on continuously, even though after that, if you reduce the maternal glucose, still the fetal hyperinsulinemia persists. So now we come to repeat screening. What our studies have shown is women with normal oral glucose tolerance tests were screened in subsequent visits. 28% of women were detected to have GDM on repeat screening repeat testing. So it doesn't mean you screen them once or at the first visit and leave them alone, especially if they have high risk family history. And if you feel they are high risk people, you definitely have to screen them at least with each trimester and based. So DIPSI criteria, now we come for the diagnosis and guidelines. And this is a single test procedure, which says a two hour plasma glucose greater or equal to 140 with 75 gram oral glucose administered in the pregnant women in the fasting or non-fasting state without regarding to the timing of the last meal is able to identify women with gestational diabetes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a single test diet which has been advocated by the DPC criteria for diagnosis of DPC for a GDM, for rationally being after a meal, a normal glucose tolerance women would be able to maintain the normal glucose despite glucose challenge due to the good insulin response. Whereas a woman in GDM who has a compromised insulin response will not be able to increase with the meal, the glucose challenge, and with glycemic exertions, the glucose levels will exaggerate further. And thus what happens is performing the single test procedure in the fasting and non-fasting state, regardless of the last meal timing is rational. As glucose concentration, the glucose tolerance test will be least affected by the timing since the last meal in a normal glucose tolerant women, but in a GDM women, definitely it will be affected. So this walk-in test is recommended by the Diabetes and Pregnancy Study Group India. So now we talk about the DIPSI criteria. Now we know how the DIPSI criteria, the outcome data is good and all. You should know a number, the number is effective or not. So how do you know this is effective? So this is a study which we did diagnosis of gestational diabetes in Asian Indian women. You can see here, you have the green bars with normal glucose tolerant women. And now we see the red bars. This is the red bars represent the GDM women after intervention. After intervention, you can see the blood glucose was similar and the 
there was no ditch the birth weight distribution was similar between the ngt and the gtm women after intervention of the 2 hour of 140 that is the dipsy criteria and it was not associated with any macrosomia so the advantages of dipsy procedure the procedure requires one blood sample only drawn 2 hours at 75 gram and even if the test is repeated each trimester the cost is 66% less than performing the IADA recommended IADPSG, which consists of three tests. And the DIPSI procedure is feasible, sustainable, cost effective, and I impact by it for less resource setting. And this is exactly what the experts say. And it was worthwhile to decrease macrosomia rate, fewer emergency sections, serious perinatal mortality may improve the women's health related quality of life. So the State Health Society. This is what they do in government of Tamil Nadu. First screening, 12 to 6. Second screening, 24 to 28 weeks. And third screening, 32 to 34 weeks. And the National Ministry of Health, Family Welfare, all they incorporated this one step in their procedures. And they also mentioned supply of glucometers to subcenters. And we have also done the point of care testing where the glucometers, which have been the glucometers, if you see, if they have been standardized for pressure in plasma glucose, the same values applicable even when you use glucometers in centers where you have the auto analyzer not available. And the WHO has already said the same thing. They endorsed are that often not available, so glucometer can be done. And the WHO recommendations in 2000, where we are a part of it, where they already mentioned that certain conditions, especially in low middle income countries, uh, you can have a non-fasting test, maybe the only practical option, and the single step procedure to diagnose GBM, all endorsed by WHO. And for the future strategies, they mentioned the DIPSI criteria to be one of the important studies for future tests. So the FIGO has already endorsed the all women at booking at first trimester. The FIGO ID of joint statements also accepts the, the DIPSI criteria and the technical team of the in the NHS and other things, if you see the Indian, they follow the DIPSI criteria and treatment. I don't go into the detail. Now we come to the target glucose levels during pregnancy. What are the levels we want to maintain to get the cutoff? So studies here have shown that a fasting of 90 and a two hour of 120 milligrams, definitely multiple studies have shown to have a good pregnancy outcome. And this again, I'm retracing this slide back to you to see the 90 and 120. This is on a mixed meal. I said 140 on a GTT, which is equivalent to 120 on a mixed meal postprandial. So this again, I'm retracing the study here to show that the birth weight when treated for DIPSI criteria after intervention, you had a very good outcome data similar to a non-glomal glucose tolerant women and the intervention was maintained at 90 and 120. This shows the results of the values, which we say are very effective. And the prevention diapap project, which we did, you can see here the National Family Health Survey, the SGA 17% was decreased to 10.4% of about 41%, and LGA has been decreased from 19% to 7.26%. This is the place where we conducted the diapap project, and the intervention maintained target control was fasting and 120 milligram. And don't think we have used insulin on every patient. No, 95% of these patients were only manipulated on dietary control and only 5% we are given insulin. Thus, a single initiative of achieving birth weight of infants appropriate to gestational age. We have a significant positive health on the overall health and family of the community. So this is again another study which was done using the DIPSI guidelines by Professor Jitendra Singh, who is now the national minister and is divided into three groups, control and GDM, who we treated, and the GDM, which did not, they did not allow them to be treated. And you find the people, GDM treated people have less complications compared to people with GDM who are not willing for treatment. So this study proves advantage of adhering to DIPTI guidelines and diagnosis. So birth weight, you can see here, it's a very good slide. If you see the third trimester, two hour post glucose in relation to birth weight on the left, you can see the birth weight is a continuum as the blood sugar increases from 82 to 99 and to 120. You see the birth weight, the normal birth weight in Indian children, 2.5 to 3.5. 
and it goes 3.5, you can see at 120, it keeps on increasing. And once the blood glucose two hours crosses 120, you can see the threshold is being altered and they're going much higher than the normal average birth weight in Indian women. And this shows the importance of treating or adhering to the DIPSI criteria. So the occurrence of microsomia was continuum as a two hour plasma increase from 120. So now maybe based on the newer concept of we can go down further or even check from eight weeks and see even at 110, maybe you can get, let country, it can go continuum right from 110. This is exactly our studies, which we published in diabetes care, says the same thing. The occurrence of birth weight of newborn greater than 19 percentile was continuum as it increased from 80 and significant about 90. And you can see here the glycemic targets, ADA 2018 has said 95, whereas the other DIPSI and everything sticks at 90. So you must see very important this study. What this study says is even a glucose of less than 5 millimoles prevents macrosomia as well as other adverse outcomes such as preeclampsia, neonatal hypoglycemia in women with gestational diabetes. So even that 95 to 90 has a significant positive impact in treating gestational diabetes. And the pattern of glycemia in normal pregnancy, this Professor already explained to you, this is what happens in normal pregnancy where the fetal renal threshold is 110. That is why he said don't allow the blood sugar in the 10th week to cross 110. Otherwise, it will cross, cross the placenta and stimulate the fetal insulin release. So if you say the fasting is about 71 plus or minus 8, 2 hours, 99 plus. Or if you see the 1 hour and 2 hours, the 2 hours less than 110, this is normal, but to an epidemiology, normally they take two standard deviations above normal. So that is why in a normal mixed meal, we are keeping two hours at 120. This is mainly for detection and treatment. Please don't confuse with prevention. If you want to go prevention, you have to go much more down. As Professor Seisha had said, maybe if we go further down and prevent throughout pregnancy, the blood sugar not to cross 110, which can stimulate the fetal pancreas then we may achieve primordial prevention of diabetes just in future generations. So target plasma glucose should be that of non-diabetic pregnancy. I told you what is that? What to be achieved right now practically is fasting of 80 to 90, two hours of 110 to 120, and you have a mean glucose between 95 and 105, and this is what recommended by the DIPSI and a birth weight is obtained between 2.5 and 3.5 kgs. As you know, if you see a step to prevent offspring development diabetes, and if you see here, this is a U-shaped curve where the birth weight less than 2.5 and a birth weight more than 4.5 babies are susceptible to diabetes in the future. So make sure you have a target blood glucose levels and have a proper birth weight between 2.5 and 3.5. So the clinical classification of hyperglycemia in pregnancy, two-hour plasma glucose in pregnancy, outside pregnancy, if you see more than 200, diabetes, outside pregnancy, diabetes, the two-hour plasma glucose of 140, GDM, and outside pregnancy, it's IGT. And this two-hour between 120 and 139, we call it as the gestational glucose intolerance. These are the people who need to be followed up and make sure that they don't develop GDM. So as I had mentioned to you earlier, the occurrence of macrosomia was continuum as it crossed 120. So these are the people which needs to be monitored. And less than 120, now we say it as normal with the present process Asia's concept, we may have to go further and say less than 110 may be normal to keep the blood sugars at 110. But this concept has to be now proven and we need more data. And once we are able to prove in subsequent years that if you are able to treat below 110, then so they may not develop diabetes in the future. So right now, for all practical purposes, we are using these criteria for diagnosis and treatment. And please don't confuse yourself for the future projects, which is primordial prevention of diabetes. So the renal threshold for glucose is 110, as I mentioned to you. That is why now it is, I think, makes more sense to go further down, which may happen in the few years when we get the data. We can come out with the newer data, which shows less than 110 what happens. 
And let me summarize the whole thing, ladies and gentlemen. Current scenario: What is happening? What is DIPSIs now? What are the DIPSI current guidelines? Ethnically Indian women are prone to develop gestational diabetes. Universal screening is necessary in the Indian context. We have the customized screening that is community 75 gram of glucose challenge test, irrespective of the last meal timing is recommended. That's the DIPSI criteria. DDM is diagnosed if the two-hour plasma glucose is greater or equal to 140. And single test that is cost effective and reliable. And clinics, you can do both fasting and two hours. It's 75 gram OGTT may be performed in clinics where all the facilities are available. And screening for the glucose intolerance at the earliest opportunity during pregnancy. Repeat screening when negative. And then if you are able to pick up people with gestational diabetes, intervention to maintain target glycemic control of 90 to 120 milligrams. So thank you very much for patient listening.